It is such an honor to celebrate with you the 70th birthday of CERN, together with some of the brightest minds in Europe and I would say in the world. Today, indeed, CERN is a magnet for top scientists from all continents. But as we just heard, there was a time when Europe was not at all an attractive place to science. Seventy years ago, many of our most brilliant scientists had fled Europe. Others had put their research on hold. It was a handful of European physicists who turned the tide and brought science back to Europe. This is how the CERN was born. And indeed, Fabiola, as you said, your founders would be very, very proud of CERN today. Today you are welcoming 17,000 visiting scholars every year. Basically, every physicist in the world wants to work at CERN. You have not only put Europe back on the map, you have become the center of the world for particle physics. And there's so much we can learn from your history. Just like 70 years ago, we live in times of rising geopolitical competition. We are in the midst of a global race for the technologies that will shape the world of tomorrow, from clean tech to quantum, from AI to fusion. And while Europe is home to more researchers than both the United States and China, we are losing ground in many fields. For instance, our global share of patent applications has been cut in half in the last two decades, from 30% down to 15%. It is time to turn the tide again, just like the CERN founders did 70 years ago. And today I would like to draw three lessons from the story of CERN. The first one is that scale matters. No European country alone could have built the world's largest particle collider. CERN has become a global hub because it rallied Europe. And this is even more crucial today. We are competing with giants. China is planning a 100-kilometer accelerator to challenge CERN's global leadership. Therefore, I am proud that we have financed the feasibility study for CERN's future circular collider. This could preserve Europe's scientific edge, and it could push the boundaries of human knowledge even further. And as the global science race is on, I want Europe to switch gear. To do so, European unity is our greatest asset. Horizon Europe is the largest research investment program in the world. Its crown jewel is the European Research Council that financed research that resulted in 14 Nobel Prizes. We must invest in this. And this is why I want to increase research spending in our next budget, just as you wished, Fabiola. But I also want to make it easier for you to access this funding. We have to focus our efforts on breakthrough innovation, as proposed in the Draghi report. Our scientists must be able to find the researchers and resources they need right here in Europe. This is a must, and we should focus exactly on this task. The second lesson of CERN is that if you want to compete more, you have to collaborate more. All your discoveries are open access. You proudly share them with a huge network of universities, industries, and startups. And it is in this spirit that we will propose 
a European Research Area Act, all European researchers should be able to access our world-class research infrastructure like supercomputers. It must be easier to pool expertise and computational power with no artificial borders or barriers. Europe's economy thrives because of free movement of goods, of talents and capital across our single market. So, it is time to finally allow the free movement of knowledge and science all across Europe. And this leads me to the third lesson. Your core mission at CERN has always been fundamental research. But all along your history, you have produced countless positive spillovers for our society and economy. It is thanks to CERN that we have the World Wide Web. And Tim Berners-Lee is among us, as far as I'm informed, over there. Congratulations again to that. It is thanks to CERN that we have touch screens. It is thanks to CERN that we have new tools for fighting cancer. You are constantly working with European industries to build low emission airplanes or to create new solutions to transport liquid hydrogen. CERN is the living proof that science fosters innovation and that innovation fosters competitiveness. We need more of these partnerships between research and business, more ideas that go from the laboratory to the factory, and this will be an important pillar of a new European Innovation Act. We must put research and innovation at the heart of Europe's economy. Ladies and gentlemen, when CERN was created, it seemed almost impossible to bring world-class science back to a devastated continent. When you designed a 27-kilometer underground tunnel where particles would clash at almost the speed of light, many thought you were daydreaming. And when you started looking for the Higgs boson, the chances of success seemed incredibly low. But you always prove the skeptics wrong. Your story is one of progress against all odds. Just like the story of the Europeans, you were born to discover. And I cannot wait to see what you will discover next, because I'm sure that once again, CERN will change the world. Bon anniversaire, happy birthday, and long live CERN. Thank you. President von der Leyen, thank you.